In today's news, Honorable Waldman lobbies for name change of Lands Bill. Higher BVI hosts fifth annual career exposition. 2024 Atlantic hurricane season opens. McMaster places third at Diamond League. Over 400 registered for Patrick Harrigan relays. And Trump found guilty on all 34 counts. We have the details of this and so much more when 284 News returns. Some claim that the age of a true gentleman is far behind us, but we disagree. He may appear in different guises today, but the values and ideals that make him a gent still stand. The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman by yours truly, Ron Grant presents Season 6. six, six, six. Introducing Sheldon Frett, actor, film producer, writer. Daylon Bantpool, entrepreneur. Terrence Neal, creative director. Chad George, entrepreneur. Humphrey Liu, financial services professional. Jamali DJ Molly Thomas, sales manager. Kai DeCastro, entrepreneur. Dean the Sportsman Greenaway, journalist. St. Clair Steady Fleming, entrepreneur. Devon Cowell, brand specialist. Robert Green, footballer. And Rick S. S. Grant, author, The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, coming June 5th, exclusively on 284 Media, inspiring a generation of greatness. At Higher BVI, we're not just about business, we're about empowering lives, and that is because we aspire to inspire. By choosing us, you're supporting a company that believes in equal opportunities, diversity, and community growth. Our mission goes beyond profit. It's about providing HR solutions, fostering talent, and leaving a positive impact. Join us in building a better future, a better BVI. Choose Higher BVI, where your support isn't just a transaction, it's a transformation. Together, we're changing lives in these beautiful Virgin Islands. Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of 284 News. It is Friday, May 31st, 2024. I'm Ron Grant, bringing you the very latest out of Tortola in the Virgin Islands. Happy Fridays, wish to each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Beginning our newscast on the local scene during the continuation of the 11th sitting of the first session of the House of Assembly of the Virgin Islands, legislators once again lobbied for changes to be made to the Crown Lands Management Bill. One voice was 6th District Representative, the Honorable Myron Walwyn, who spoke on the level of the importance of the bill and its impact on Virgin Islanders. And it ranks among those bills that are perhaps the most important bills that I have had to debate, or other members I'm sure would agree, we have to debate over the time that we've been in this house. We're dealing with the issue of lands, Madam Speaker. I, I do have one regret, not a regret of mine, but perhaps a regret of the government and perhaps something that we can learn from going forward, that when you're discussing topics like this, the importance of land in the country and what's going to happen with crown lands, that we have to find a way to get the public more involved in it. I think other members may have said that before, because we, we, we're doing some things in the House that will change the orientation, so to speak, of the country, the way we do business. And I, I am not satisfied. Um, when speaking to persons in the public, that they understand some of the changes that are taking place. And not just with the Crown Lands policy, not just with immigration, but all those changes that are coming down the pipeline as a result of the COI recommendations, I, I don't think enough is being done. And if we're saying that these changes are being done for the people to improve the country, then I think it's important, Madam Speaker, that the people that you say you're doing it for, that they have a, a clearer understanding of what it is we are actually doing. Honorable Walwyn also supported a suggestion to change the name of the bill. I want to support, Madam Speaker, the suggestion that was made by Honorable Turnbull that we rename the bill. Instead of saying the Crown Lands Management Bill, 
I prefer to hear Virgin Islands Lands Management Bill. I'll tell you why I say that. You look at the objects of the Act, you look at Section 3, and it says, A, to ensure that Crown lands are managed for the benefit of the people of the Virgin Islands. Then you go up into the interpretation section, you see Crown lands, and it refers to land owned and managed by the government of the Virgin Islands. But those lands are owned and managed on behalf of the people of the Virgin Islands. Now, it might sound a bit pedantic. It might sound as if you're trying to simplify something or make a differentiation that might not be important. But I'll tell you, when Honorable Turnbull was saying it, and I don't know if Honorable Skelton remembers, I don't know how well his memory is. I remember one time we were discussing land issues. There was a particular governor who was here. And we were trying to get something for somebody on Wickham Ski sorted out because our job is to help our people out. And we're there going backward and forward and backward and forward. And then when he couldn't get his way with us, he said to us, well, you know the lands are crown lands. We nearly eat it for fish inside there when he, when he opened that out him up. He was lunch. So it tells you a thing, the thinking that they have. It, it's not that simple. It's called Crown Lands, but the lands belong to the people of the Virgin Islands, and that differentiation is very strong. Additionally, he highlighted areas in the bill that are conflicting. Walwyn argued that legislators must be aware and pay attention as their ability to help the community is becoming less and less effective. Higher BVI held his career exposition today under the theme, Show Me the Way, a Roadmap to Employment. Our 284 Media's Jocka Wooding was on the ground to capture this event. Take a look. Good morning, um, I'm Celisha Stadon, sales supervisor. Um, I represent Caribbean Sellers. Um, we're a beverage company. We not only sell alcoholic beverages, we have flavored water, sparkling water, still water, tobacco. Um, we sell sodas, alcoholic drinks. We like to help people, you know. We saw the opportunity in, you know, wanting to hire people. We are looking for workers. So I think this would be the best opportunity so that people could know who we are and what we are looking for and stuff like that. Hi, good morning. My name is Tony Tuckett from Parts and Power. Been here a while um, from the growing up. And um, what we do is JCB equipment. We do generators. We do transmission and eat on electrical items. And uh, we're located in Fish Bay, um, Skeleton, next to Drake's, Drake's Traders, next, um, in the Skeleton Bay. Hi, and I'm Stacy Lloyd. I'm the director for the British Virgin Islands Red Cross. And today we have our booth, which we're exhibiting prepare, plan, and prevent for the hurricane season. Apart from that, we're also welcoming applications for our summer internship. And we also have a short employment opportunity for a cash voucher specialist. So we're also doing blood pressure checks as well as blood type testing. Right now, the hospital has a very, very small crisis where we need blood. And so today we're advocating for persons to come down, get to know what your blood type is. And we're encouraging persons to give blood to the D. Orlando Hospital so that persons in the community can get blood as needed right now. So come down to the higher BVI fair, learn about hurricane preparedness, apply for internships with the BVI Red Cross, know your blood pressure as well as your blood type. Good morning, everyone. My name is Deberio Alexis Jr., business sales with CCT. Today we are at the higher BVI Expo and we're asking all interested persons to come on down and visit the CCT boot which is very busy at the moment, as you can see. So we have primarily our executive assistant, Akisha Robinson. She's speaking with the potential candidates who are interested in seeking jobs at CCT. So we ask you all to come on down. Um, CCT, I've been with CCT just for about two years now, but CCT is a great place of employment. And if you're looking for whether it's a starter job in customer care or sales rep or even business sales, we ask you to come on down and hear what we have to offer. You'll definitely learn a lot and be intrigued by the 
services we can offer you and what you can bring to the team. So come on down. My name is Carrie Hoyt. I am the PRO at the Social Security Board. We are here today to encourage new employees about what they should be doing, their rights and responsibilities when they're getting into the workforce. What we're really trying to encourage persons to do when to start working, regardless of how long you've been working, whether a year or five years, 15 years, ensure that your employer is you know, paying your contributions to ensure that you are protected. You know, we offer seven benefits at the Social Security Board, sickness, maternity, employment, injury. We really want the people of the Virgin Islands at every stage of their employment journey to know that they are protected, they are covered by the Social Security Board. Hi, my name is Cherez. I am representing the H. Laverty Stout Community College, Robert McTavius Institute for Financial Services. And we're happy to be a part of the Hire BVI event today. We know that typically when people come to Hire BVI, they're expecting to come for jobs and so. But we recognize that apart from the unemployed, we also have the unemployed, the underemployed, who come to these events. And we also have persons who are looking for a shift in career. And at the HLSCC RMI, we offer a range of courses. We are actually the only professional qualification center in the British Virgin Islands. And we've been offering courses, professional courses, for the last 20 years. We offer courses such as ACCA courses, that's for accountants. We offer ICA courses with the International Compliance Association. And those courses include courses such as anti-money laundering, governance, risk, and compliance. And we also offer courses with the Corporate Governance Institute. Apart from these professional courses, we also offer introductory courses, such as introduction to financial services, introduction to corporate governance, introduction to compliance, as well as advanced courses, such as the advanced corporate governance. Viewers up next, we have more on the local scene. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. At Partners for Kids, your child's health and happiness are at the heart of everything we do. We've been the trusted medical home for children and adolescents up to 18 years old. And now, we are excited to welcome a new member to our family of healthcare professionals. Introducing Dr. Aisha Maxwell, our new family practitioner. Dr. Maxwell brings a wealth of experience and deep passion for pediatric and adult care, ready to join our team in providing first-rate health health services to your family. At Partners for Kids, we believe in a collaborative approach to healthcare. With partners in occupational therapy and clinical psychology, Partners for Kids, where caring is just the beginning. Visit us at Road Reef Plaza Tortola, open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call us at 284-444-5437 or reach out at info at partnersforkids.com to learn more. Oh, Angie, how can I get my claims paid quick? Rent's due next week. CG processes 99% of claims within five days. Remember when I was hang on with those goats? I caught a gust of winning food right into a moving car. Every appendage was in the cast, and they paid fast and fairly. That's what I get for trusting a man with a mustache and an eye patch. Now I gotta go. I'm meeting the guy who bedazzled my toes. 99% of claims are processed within five days. CG Insurance. Good like that. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you so much for sticking with us. Continuing on on the local scene, June 1st is the official start date for the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. In anticipation of the busy season ahead, our Jocka Wooding sat with representatives of the Department of Disaster Management. Take a look at their discussion. We would have heard from the forecast that we would have put out earlier this year, as well as the one that came out uh, from the National Weather Service indicating that the season would be above average. Uh, we've seen where uh, some of them have predicted upwards of 28 name storms, uh, 12 to 14 hurricanes, uh, seven or more major hurricanes. That is quite a bit um, that we may expect this season for 2024. And also, as we continue to say, it only takes one system mm -hmm. to come in our direction and create extreme havoc, uh, even a major disaster for us. So it's very critical that individuals pay attention to the information that's coming out. Uh, don't take it for granted. Don't wait until the last minute. When you look at the National Hurricane Center, uh, the satellite images, and you see everything lights up with all those colors yeah. coming across the, the Atlantic, and then people start to... I get agitated. No, that's not the time. Right now, 
when we look at it, it's clear. Yeah, they are saying that not within the next seven days, next 48 hours. We know that could change at short notice. Mm -hmm. However, because we are still not into the in-depth or the high point uh, of the season, now is the time for us to begin our preparations. Absolutely. And you mentioned that the information is out there. Let's talk about reliable sources of information because a lot of the time in hurricane season, we see people sharing old videos, people sharing old articles and it gets others concerned because when you see this information um video sharing on whatsapp it's difficult to verify them but at least with the articles you could check the dates you could check the dates on posts could you just share with us some reliable sources of information about the hurricane season uh certainly uh, of course i have to say the information that's coming from us comes from reliable sources some that we contract others that are in agreement based on international and I would say global standards. Mm -hmm. um, the National Hurricane Center, everyone in the region knows the National Hurricane Center. I should point out that the National Hurricane Center is the official hurricane forecasting uh, agency uh, for this region. Uh, even though we have the satellite met offices throughout the region, throughout the Caribbean, the National Hurricane Center is the official source for hurricane forecasting. And usually what they do every year, even around this time, you collab they collaborate with the various MET units or MET offices throughout the region. And that's where you see the information that this year might be general across the board. But as the systems get closer to uh, the particular landmass or the particular area, that's where you have to pay attention to the official information that may be coming out from that particular uh, meteorological office. As you could see, they even put within the disclaimer that um, you should use the information coming out from your local meteorological service yeah. to make particular decisions. For us, for some time, the Antigua and Barbuda meteorological uh, services has been the official force for presenting that type of information for the Virgin Islands. Uh, there's, uh, there are work, there's work in the background as being done to eventually move the Virgin Islands to uh, a place where they are able to, where we are able to have our own, I would say, meteorological office. That would take some time, but there's work that is, is ongoing. But for now, uh, the information that's coming out from us comes via the Antigua and Barbuda Meteorological Service as well as via the National Hurricane Center. The full interview will be available on all Tweet4 media platforms. BVI lander Kyron McMaster delivered an impressive performance at the Wanda Diamond League Bill Set Games in Oslo, Norway on Friday, securing a third place finish in the men's 400 meter hurdles. Running against some of his top competition for the upcoming Paris Olympic Games, the world number three McMaster clocked a time of 48 point 49 seconds. The race was a thrilling contest with Brazilian Alison Dos Santos and world number one ranked Carson Walholm of Norway battling for the top spot. In a stunning upset, Dos Santos edged out Walholm, crossing the finish line in 46.63 seconds, while Walholm, racing in front of his home crowd, finished closely behind with a time of 46.70 seconds. McMaster's third place finish reaffirms his status as one of the top hurdlers in the world and sets a positive tone for his preparations leading up to the Paris Olympics. Viewers up next, we have more on the local scene. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Hi, my name is Judy, VI Motors Operations Assistant, and today I'm here with Ding, one of our mechanics, and we are going to show you how you can check your engine oil level as it's an essential part in maintaining your engine's health. First, let's pop the hood. Here's the oil dipstick. We'll pull it out, wipe it clean with a cloth, reinsert it, and pull it out again to get an accurate oil level reading. As you can see, the oil level should be between the minimum and maximum markers on the dipstick. If it's below the minimum, it's time to add some oil. Checking your oil level is simple yet a crucial task. Make sure to do it regularly to keep your engine running smoothly. And remember, 
If you're not sure about your vehicle's specific oil requirements, always consult your owner's manual or a professional mechanic at VI Motors. We offer a diverse range of top quality engine oils. So visit us at Dove's Bottom or our location at Pratt's Point Virgin Quarter or call us at 494-2496 or visit us on our website at www.vimotos.com. Yo, everything good dad? Bye. This thing got me one way daddy. What do you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What do you mean? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home. Keeping out that trouble, me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live. Bring it home. One month free trial. Turn into five. Five months turn into well. <clears throat> you know I huff. I watch him bark. I've been watching football, Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you so much for sticking with us. The highly anticipated inaugural Patrick Harrigan Relays is poised for the A.O. Shirley Recreation Ground this weekend, with approximately more than 400 participants registered to compete over the two-day event. On Thursday, Wayne Robinson, Program Officer for the Sports in the Department of Youth Affairs and Sports, shared insights with 24 Media about the impressive registration numbers and the meticulous planning behind the event. Take, for instance, uh, the BVI High School, they have 30 athletes. Brigado Flex um, have just about the same, and that's secondary. Um, we have Sibani with about 20 20 plus. Uh, we have uh, the technical school. They just have about uh, about 15 athletes. Um, uh, again, we have St. George's, another probably 15 athletes. And that's that's just secondary. All right. And if we're, we're speaking about the corporate, um, if we have 13 teams um, and each team has about uh, an average just an average of eight, you know, and then we have the clubs. Um, four clubs, maybe another average of eight. So we're looking at some great numbers coming out on Sunday. Robinson highlighted the detailed schedule for day one, which will feature the participating primary schools. Day one will basically um, mimic what we have done for the for the inter primary athletic championships. Um, in terms of the age categories, they are the same. We have the under nine, the under eleven, and um, and the senior primary, which consists of the under thirteen and the thirteen plus. So for the under nine category, we'll have the four by fifties and these will be ran in rungs. So we have our qualifiers because we have um, about 11 or 12 schools. So we'll have two hits and we'll take the top three fastest, the top three and the next two fastest times. Um, that's, is it? Yes, the, the top three next two fastest times and they will, they will run the, the finals. Um, it will be the same for the under 11 and the same for the the senior senior category. Um, we do have the sprint medley. Um, that's only run by the seniors, and uh, that's uh, 100, 100, 200, 400, and uh, that will be a straight final. He also provided a sneak peek into the lineup for day two, predicting an action-packed conclusion with events that will feature track clubs, corporate teams, and secondary schools. I know that's the day that everyone is looking forward to because uh, that's an action-packed day. Um, so we do have the, the corporate. So they would, again, be running the 4 by one Again, those will be qualifiers because of the number of teams and the entries we have. Um, and then we have the clubs. Uh, they would be street finals because uh, we only have just about four clubs. Secondary, we have just about five uh, schools. So those would be straight finals. And then we have the mix sprint medley. So that's for the, the corporate. Um, again, the, the distance is one, one, two, four, and it's gonna be a female, male, female, male. So we, we try to make sure, again, in align with all athletics that um, the female run with the female and the male run with the male. Um, for the four by four, we do have the clubs. 
uh, the club mix four by four. Again, it will be female, male, female, male. Meanwhile, Stephanie Ross Penn, General Secretary for the BVI Athletics Association, emphasized that the relays will adhere to world athletics rules. She said this adherence ensures that any record-breaking performances will be globally recognized, enhancing the event's prestige and importance in the athletics calendar. It's one of the things we aim to do and we have been working towards it in all the events, especially as we've begun, begun to increase partnerships across events with the Department of Youth Affairs and Sports. We've always had the partnership, but we're really so solidifying it and expanding and really growing. And the initiative coming out of this department to have this event has been an excellent one. And Mr. Robinson and I have had a lot of discussions and one key thing has been that the events must be guided by World Athletics rules. And based on that, it puts us in a really good position because the way in which the wall of track and field is moving towards and already has moved towards is that in order for you to be able to use the times that you get at an event, eventually that event has to be what, on what's called the global calendar. And so our aim is to grow this event where by next year, we actually put it on the global calendar it must be properly officiated to be on the global calendar. But by being there, it means indeed that if we have a national team run a particular time, that time can put them in world rankings, whether as juniors or seniors. For those unable to attend in person, the relays will be streamed live on CCT Live, Channel 284, and 284 Media's Facebook page. Coverage begins at 3 p.m. on both Saturday, June 1st and Sunday, June 2nd, allowing fans worldwide to witness the excitement. On the international scene, in a historic and unprecedented verdict, a Manhattan ju jury sorry, has found former United States President Donald Trump guilty on all 34 counts of falsifying business records in connection with a hush money criminal trial. This verdict marks the first time in U.S. history that a former president has been convicted of a felony. The trial overseen by Judge Juan Merchant concluded with the announcement of the guilty verdicts with Judge Merchant setting a sentencing hearing for July 11th. Trump's sentence will be at the judge's discretion and could range from probation to prison time. Prosecutors accuse Trump of participating in an illegal conspiracy aimed at undermining the integrity of the 2016 presidential election. They argued that Trump engaged in an unlawful scheme to suppress negative information, which included concealing a hush money payment to an adult film star. Despite the felony conviction, Trump, who is presumably the GOP nominee for the 2024 presidential election, remains eligible to run for office. In response to the jury's decision, Trump denounced the verdict as a disgrace and asserted that the real verdict would come during the presidential election on November 5th. President Joe Biden responded to the conviction on social media, stating that this 2024 rival can only be defeated at the ballot box. Biden's message underscores the importance of the upcoming election in determining the future leadership of the United States. The case has drawn significant attention due to its implications for the rule of law and the political landscape in the United States. As the United States awaits the sentencing in July, the focus will undoubtedly turn to how this historic conviction will impact Trump's political ambitions and the broader electoral process. Viewers, that is it for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for your daily news updates at 284 Media and 284 BVI on Instagram and Twitter. Of course, follow us on our WhatsApp channel for daily updates. I'm Ron Grant. I'll see you again on Monday. Have a safe and enjoyable evening. Happy Friday. Goodbye.